Alright, down here for another draftphysics.com. Debatephysics.com. Did I say. Yes, I don't know what I said. <laughs> uh, draftphysics.com and debatephysics.com. Uh, those are the two websites. Anyway, uh, tired. Uh, I've been doing other things, outdoor work and such. Um, anyway, so uh, the Despar moron has made another video. Uh, and it's just more garbage. So they're trying to prove this idiotic. This is just idiotic, and I have to explain. And it's like, no, I really shouldn't have to explain why this is idiotic. It's idiotic to say that it's, tw you know, <laughs> that twice the speed of a motor is four times the energy, or three times the speed is nine times the energy, or four times the speed is 16 times the energy. It's just nonsense. It doesn't take 16 times the fuel to make it go f four times as fast, and it doesn't produce 16 times the work. And this, okay, if I put an object on a scale, gravity is a consistent force, and it makes the scale deflect. And let's say it deflects a one. And I do exactly the same action, the same exact weight, I add it. So now there's two of these on the scale. I get twice the compression on the scale, not four times the compression, just twice. And they say that that twice the compression is four times the magical energy. So it somehow can give back four times the amount of work I put in, you know, twice the amount of work. So I put two units of work in, I get four units out. If I did three, they say that three times the compression of the spring is nine times the energy, which means now I have nine times. I can do this, the opposite of this, right? The opposite amount of work. I can do nine times worth of it, okay? With the rebound of the scale. Of the scale. No, I can't. I can only do the three. I put three in, I'm only gonna get three out. It's just so idiotic. And so they have to go over this and over this. This is like the thin ice argument. What? Who am I arguing with? What kind of, you know. And this is the physics these people will defend. They'll sit there and say, it's all done. We're finished. We've, we've figured out the truth. And you don't have anything close to the truth. You have a silly fable. And it's just amazing that people just defend it as if it's evidence. Then it's not evidenced. So, anyway, I'll point out just some obvious defects in this silly experiment he did. So, there's two images here. Now, you're not probably going to be able to see this, but there's a stick, okay, <laughs> going along these batteries. And in the one case, okay, where it's going twice the velocity, the stick is behind the batteries. And in the case where it's going one velocity, the stick is in front of the batteries. Clearly, and, and he got a, a, you know, half the energy versus twice the energy result. And so obviously the distances he's making these batteries fall is inaccurate because he got the right answer, but he got it for the wrong reason because obviously these aren't the same events in terms of the impact because the weight's in front of the measuring device in one case and it's behind the measuring device in the other case. Then, and the rest of it has to, has to do with this moronic battery thing. All right, so, um, all right, let me go ahead and try to find the image of the stupid, the, the way he did the, 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 the rubber band. It's idiotic. So he says, look, uh, I had to stretch the rubber band because if I didn't stretch the rubber band, there'd be two rubber bands. So what's wrong with two rubber bands? Now, how is two rubber bands make the experiment not work? By stretching, okay, by... You can see this well enough. I believe you can. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, do I need to... Yeah, I, I could use the pointer, I guess. Oh, I think I can use the pointer. Uh, by stretching the rubber band, okay, this way, he's preloaded it. So it's like pressing, compressing, pre-compressing a spring and then doing the experiment. The odds are you're breaking the linearity. So Hooke's Law no longer applies if you start pushing the spring to its limits. So it works within a range. It has tolerances. Outside that range, it's not linear anymore. Um, fact. 
So he pointed this out in the previous videos. He acknowledges that I pointed it out, and he has done nothing excuse. Uh, well, if I don't do that, then there's two rubber bands. So what? <laughs> then there are two linear rubber bands. All right, but this is completely non-linear in the sense that obviously the amount of tension in these this triangle is going to change depending on how much tension hits the rubber band. All of the rubber band is going to stretch, not just this part of the rubber band. So it's really just dampening the whole experiment and um, you know screwing okay with the tension of the the spring, which is making the spring. Uh, excessively compressed. So there's no evidence, first, <laughs> that Hooke's Law works perfect with rubber bands. Second, that when it does apply to rubber bands, that certainly rubber bands have a limited tolerance. Okay, so if you overstretch a rubber band, it's not going to be linear anymore. A tiny bit of difference in the amount of stretch will create a bigger difference in the amount of energy you've stored in the rubber band. So. Complete bullshit. All right. So that's probably there's oh, there's 14 other reasons to hate the way he did this experiment. So I'm not even you know I could go through all of the how crappy it is in terms of the ways configured the weights. Um, you know, gluing shit, rubber bands holding the weights on. That means the weights can shift and move based on how much tension's in the rubber band. I mean, just all kinds of bullshit. Little bent nails. Uh, the rubber band goes over the ruler. Uh, you know, it's a ridiculously flawed and garbage experiment. And I won't even talk about the measuring bullshit, right? The same bullshit. He draws a curved line on the background, and we're supposed to believe that somehow he's gotten this curve correct. He pushes the weights up to a nail, which doesn't guarantee the center of mass is the same for these big giant things versus the little tiny things. The little batteries and these big things don't have the same center of mass. So obviously it can't be the same distance to have a nail on the frickin' board. I mean, this is just such bullshit. All right, so enough of that, and I'll throw it. One more time, go through it again, just point out how paradoxically retarded this is. They won't respond to my claim that it's paradoxical re and retarded, okay? <laughs> they won't explain how it's not. Um, so they don't counter my actual arguments at all. They'll try to redraw it in some other configuration, some weird, strange, bizarre way, and say, oh yeah, it's the same experiment. No, it's not the same experiment. All right, so <clears throat> the basic uh, experiment, let's see, yeah, go this way. This way, okay, <laughs> is, uh, yeah, you're just taking a rubber band, all right? So instead of just having a rubber band, you know, go from one nail to the other nail, that is all the rubber band will be between the two points, so you're just going to stretch the rubber band. He's done this weird thing of putting, stretching, pre-stretching the rubber band out here. So now when he pushes in here, he's going to create an unknown amount of force in these two sides. All right, and you can see that when he does the experiment that the, the weights are turning, all kinds of crap is happening that you can't, you know, if you're going to do an experiment seriously, it's got to be precise. It can't be this rubbish. All right, anyway, so the basic point is, right, is that you're saying, okay, we have a certain amount of compression of the, you know, distance-wise. And their argument is just what I showed on the scale. They're saying that one unit of compression equals one unit of energy. Okay, so one compression equals one unit of energy. And then they're saying two units of compression, that is twice the distance and the compression is four units of energy. So only two units of compression equals four units of energy. Now I just show with the scale, obviously it doesn't work in gravity. Okay, so gravity doesn't work that way. Uh, I put in two units of mass Okay, and it's only twice the energy to get the two units of mass onto the scale. Um, it's, it can't be four times the energy. It's impossible. That's free energy. All right, so <clears throat> the basic argument is, is that obviously, okay, we're just going to say, well, let's turn the scale sideways, right? So we compress it, one unit of compression, and then we turn this whole thing sideways, okay? We've locked in the, the compression. So we have one unit of compression, and we can have the expectation that we'll get one unit of energy out, right? That's all we can get out of it, it's one unit of energy. 
and their argument is, okay, so and one unit of energy could be visualized as taking some mass and moving it a velocity. So it'll equal a, let's say, a one mass moving one velocity. That could be what we're going to create just the right, you know, weight that we'll put inside that compression. And so it's a one mass, and we can get, expect a one velocity out of one unit of compression. And so what they're arguing is that if I have two units of compression, which we just, you know, I just demonstrated that two units of compression is created just by doubling the weight. And doubling the weight just means you did the same exact thing you did to create the first compression. So one unit of work in, okay, creates this compression. Two units of work in creates this compression. Just an absolute fact. Um, but they're saying now, when I have these two units of compression, that now I can move four of these one masses, one velocity. So I can move four masses, four one masses, one V. Okay. Not two, four. And then if I again was to compress it a th you know, again and go three compression, right? This is two compression. This is one compression, right? So now I have three compression, right? They're saying with three times the weight, that's all I did, right? I mean, I'm, we're just turning it. We had it go in this way. Now we're going to turn it this way. When it's this way, the weight created a three compression, a three mass. I'm now going to take a mass and shoot it at a velocity. We already established that the amount of work for one of those units of compression, all I need is this one mass, and it'll make it like one velocity. So now they're saying that with a three compression, which is only three units of work in, I can now create nine. Okay, nine. I can take nine masses and make them go one velocity. Nine. So that's their argument. And then it goes 16. All right, and then it goes 25. Five for 25. And then it goes six for 36. And it goes 7 for 41, I don't know, whatever, for 49. Um, you know, and then 8 is uh, 64. So, so just 8 times the compression, I get 64 units of energy out. I put 8 units of work in. That is, I just move one mass 8 times, create the mass, the weight, and gravity. And now they're saying, when I release that energy it will have 64 times the energy. It will now make 64 things move the same speed as the one moved with one unit of compression. So one unit of compression equals 60, and, and so, so eight units of compression. So one unit of compression equals one unit of work, that is a mass moving of velocity, and Eight units of compression equals 64 units of work. And I have to make these arguments. I mean, I have to make these videos. I have to explain how that's impossible physics. That's, that's um, a clear, easy debunk. This is showing you the round Earth, okay? The Earth can't do what they're saying, okay? It's round. It's not flat, okay? It doesn't do this. I can't put eight units of work in, move the weight eight times onto the scale, okay, <laughs> eight times, and then get 64 units of energy out. I can't do that. It's retarded to think that happens somewhere. Um, and I really shouldn't have to make these videos, but the human race is demonstrating itself to be so dishonest so pathetically stupid, so dupish, so frickin' religious that, oh, th their Pope says so. <laughs> and that's all they have. They have no physical evidence of this crap. And then they contrive these sloppy, dirty, stinking, lazy, bullshit experiments and claim they're proving that's a truth. They're proving that you can't move quickly across thin ice and not break the ice. They're proving that you can make 64 times the work doing eight times the work, right? Eight, eight units of work in, 64 units of work out. 
and I have to make these fucking videos? I mean, it, it's so bad. It's just so pathetic what you humans are. You're just so, you're so goddamn arrogant, stupid, ignorant. Um, you'll fall for anything and then you'll become aggressive, moronic fans. I mean, go watch your whatever UFC shit or something. Go watch somebody go knock the teeth out of some other asshole. I mean, you're such crude, moronic pieces of garbage. I mean, you eat shit, you think shit, um, you make just pathetic arguments. Ugh, it's disgraceful that you fucking morons could even think of throwing an insult my way when you're defending something this fucking stupid. Okay, <laughs> enough of the video. Uh, it's just so discouraging. Being on the internet and you know just the the whole censorship of it you know the whole you know it's all this pop culture bullshit you fuckers just want to be fed with the goddamn fucking corporation thinks you want to know <laughs> you know you don't think any of it should be honest and have any integrity at all uh, you know you just want them to play with you know your songs and that's it <laughs> you just want to hear what you want to hear and you don't want to hear anything else you don't want to be you don't want to yeah you don't want to be exposed to, you don't want your your ignorance your small mindedness your little tiny minds to be exposed that's all you have Piero. tiny little brains <sighs> fuck and no integrity to be found. I mean, not to admit that it's ridiculous for any arrogant asshole to be saying what they've proven in physics when they can't even show an experiment demonstrating that four pounds dropped one foot is the same energy as one pound dropped four feet. I mean, the only thing way they can show that to be true is to cheat the hell out of it. To just plain cheat. Ugh, disgusting. God, I hate this planet.